some of my favorite people. I'm not even sure people know we're friends, guys. When's the last time we've been on stream? It's a long time, bud. Oh, man, it's like it probably right a back. year, right? When we were when we were getting when we were doing announcements of what we were going to launch, I believe. It yeah, I think it's been a long time, man. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Obviously, to the audience, I'm sure most of you guys already know Triplet and Ty here, Hextrovert, Triplet Dad, 007. Uh, these guys have been around for a long time. They've been personal friends of mine for a long, long time. Uh, man, how, guys, what? We've probably known each other almost four years at this point now? Yeah, easy. Yeah, time we're not even it. friends. We're old friends. Yeah, you're, you're one of the guys that we always bounce off, uh, yeah. bounce ideas off, right? Uh, to make sure that we're, we're not going completely sideways. Yeah. Um, Everybody knows I can get a little heated, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe I should quell this fire a little bit. What do you think? It, it's a, been a, a great relationship. Bud. Yeah, you. it's been an absolute pleasure. Again, like not yeah. just all the professional stuff that we've done, but just late night calls, took working through all kinds of stuff for years now. So it's uh, it's been very cool, man. So obviously, we're a little excited about Barista. Have uh, How's your guys' launch going? It's going pretty Sweet. well. Yeah, we're, we have uh, adoption. Uh, we're cranking out bean coins. We're doing all kinds of stuff. What what are the what are the stats, Ty? Huh, stats. What do the bean counters have to say? Yeah, well, the, the bean. Well, yeah, like any incentive token, um, there's going to be people that sell it off, right? Uh, and that's that's fine. Like it's it's uh, DeFi. Do it. Do what you want with what you earn. Um, there's a lot of people stacking. Um, some people, uh, if they are the smart ones, if they're selling, they're doing it without hurting the chart. They just put it in a single sided, um, LP on nine millimeter. And so when it comes into range, it's just taking their bean and giving them a uh, pulse and it doesn't produce red candles and they get, they get a, a better order execution and an amount. Um, people are in fucks. We've got uh, MCR and uh, being uh, gauged pools, so people can actually provide a 80 20 on fux and uh, earn earn fux yield. So free yield on free yield, pretty much. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, we've got some beans got a lot of future use cases. We've been pretty cagey about what it's going to do. We we did um, we did communicate publicly that you'll need bean steak bean. On, on Bistro, which is going to be our OTC marketplace, right? And that's got some pretty cool features. And by staking Bean, um, the longer you stake it, the more discount you get on the OTC uh, trades, the fees. And so they'll start at like, we haven't finalized the the, the, the fees yet, but let's let's just say for this uh, discussion, it's two and a half percent. Uh, and maybe it's on a curve over the 60 days if you stake that it comes all the way back down to 1%. And as long as you leave it staked, you get 1% as long as you stake type type scenario. So, and that's just one use case directly we're going to have with Beam. But we we have a roadmap of uh, an internal roadmap of quite a few things that uh, Beam can be used for uh, in the future, as well as NFT collections, free NFTs. Some of those NFTs will be purely collectors. Others will be utility based. Um, so... If you don't have been, you may not get the opportunity to get involved in some of that stuff. So you want to tell them about the little bit of uh, the announcement you guys made on Twitter the other day as well? Which one? We make announcements all the time. We do. Well, <laughs> now you got to tell me about all of them because I might have missed one. So now you're going to embarrass me in front of my crowd here. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, so you, I'm sorry. you guys are la launching Barista on another protocol. Right. Yes. Yeah. So we had a lot of people... Who obviously uh, deep into PulseX, right? Obviously, it was a big sacrifice. Um, a lot of people that missed out on Pulse decided to uh, get involved in the PulseX one, and so um, obviously, there's. It, it looks like already they've got great adoption at Earn. We had a lot of people saying, "Hey, why can't you do Barista for Earn?" Um, and yeah, the, the, I mean, we've done all the coding, so it's it's not like a, a, a pure just flick a switch and make it happen. You still got to um you know basically copy paste and rewrite some things and then test it and make sure everything works as intended um, but the idea is is to have that out in the not too distant future with a basically a toggle on the one dap right um between uh yeah. pls 
and PLSX or something like that, and it'll it'll flick between liquid loans and earn, right? And um, again, the same uh, it'll be the same deal as what it does for for liquid loans. It, it will offer strength and stability um, in the form of their their stablecoin in that pool, uh, and um, any any fees from the rebalancing will go to the MCR stakers. You know the the fees that our DApps generate. Um, they're not scraped 100 of those fees so there's a one percent fee on barista and it's only on rebalancing um and 100 of that one percent fee goes to the mcr staker class very cool and and something that i should give you guys some kudos to and it's i think it's important just to highlight again um so we we're pretty savvy about it from the hex standpoint we get that multiple front ends are important for DeFi, um, but i actually had a pretty hefty six-figure stablecoin player who's very familiar with liquidity. He's on ETH primarily. Um, he saw some of our documentation, looked over and was like, oh man, you know, very cool. I'm comfortable with liquidity. I like what you guys done. Professional team. He's, you know, very, very complimentary. I was pretty excited. And he was, well, what happens if your guys' front end go down? Um, and I was like, well, you know, as of right now, there's some coming out. And he was very, very polite, basically like, let me know when there's another front end. I, he, had, he had had that issue, I think, on a couple of different uh, applications where this, this guy's pretty savvy. He goes and chases... Uh, yield he actually holds very little risk on crypto this is just a guy who just he learns enough crypto basically go chase yield so he, he almost moves around like a traditional investor who's just chasing dividends and yield doesn't really like the exposure um pretty interesting um his direction around crypto and the reason i highlight that is as soon as you guys went live i messaged him was like here's your next front end brother he said perfect and you know he moved in a pretty uh, healthy six-figure amount over um you know he's gonna be more involved in the pulse chain space so one your guys' front end, redundancy, that whole DeFi narrative was really, really powerful. Um, but also he was extremely complimentary of your guys' front end. And even, even with familiar, being familiar with Liquidity, he sees most other front ends as sort of a backup. It's just kind of a redundancy side. But when he saw what you guys has done where it's, and we'll show it here in a minute, where it's, it's beautiful. Like you guys did a fantastic job. It's a very attractive front end. It's usability. You guys added functionality. That really resonated with him. And actually later this, uh, well, it's Thursday. So here in a couple of days, um, he actually wants to hop on a call about doing his own front end. Like you guys inspired him to actually keep building. So it's a big tip of the hat to you awesome. guys, not only for adding redundancy to us, but that that's what somebody from outside the community bringing some weight in. That that was that was his progress. He didn't want is to use he, us instead of front end, and he didn't even Mars? want to build build one when he saw you guys. It, 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 was he a B and B guy? Uh, so I I just kind of got the like the overview as we discussed things. Originally, again, it was stuff on liquidity um that he was using there that's what he was familiar with that protocol right um but he he basically does a lot of stable coin arbitrage and he's just always looking for an opportunity to basically take something stable and get some filthy well he should like barista then uh the stability pool given that you get the yep. auto read points arbitrage right um probably one thing to point out just just so people are clear though with that redundancy um so the borrow um and repayment so the whole borrow section is a pass through to liquid loans. So if you if you borrow on liquid loans and then you come to Barista, everything is the same, and you can. Well, do you guys borrow. want to go bring up your front end? We'll walk through it a bit. Sure, TD can do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a pure pass through the borrow section and the redemption section, and obviously the liquidation is the same. It's a carbon copy set. I think ours looks cooler with the traffic light system uh, that emulates the TCR, you know, it goes orange and it goes red. So visually they can see if they're in danger. But just so people are aware, hypothetically, if your front end went down and they were using the stability pull through liquid loans, they wouldn't actually be able to exit through Barista because we have our contracts on top of yours. So if they did it through ours, then they would. But then if we went down, they wouldn't be able to exit through yours. So, and that's purely because the, the stability pool and the staking pool, we have contracts that, that that interact with your contracts, right? It goes through ours then to yours. I think um, for both our own sakes and probably for liquid loans, to not so much rely on any other team to make uh, a, 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 another front end that is 100% re, uh, a backup redundancy, say, probably good to like make some short videos on how to use each section directly through the blockchain sure. and then people don't have to worry about any front ends at all if you know and i think that's something we we, we want to walk work towards 
Um, it, it is a little bit um, challenging. People don't understand the numbers and what um, calls they have to make. But if we had a little video that says, you know, in the event that a front end goes down, here's how you can interact directly with the blockchain. Here's the correct, you know, calls and figures you would use and that type of thing. And that way, um, people don't have to worry at all. Right. So, and so just this to a little clarity, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I don't, I don't want to go too da- too far down that, that rabbit hole just before TD jumps in, just so we get a little like familiarity with some of these terms. So, you know, what Ty is basically into is LL has a set of contracts and that's what LL is on the blockchain, right? Like that is right there. That cannot go down. Now, what we're looking at here is the front end. So this front end has to be hosted and ran. So the front end can go down, but the contracts can never leave. So the same thing with Barista. Barista has, they have a few set of contracts like their stability pool, uh, like their state, some of their stake features, but everything else is the same. It runs through the LL contracts. So their front end is just writing to our contracts. Um, so in the event that any of these things go down, one of the things that we can do and that people should actually uh, learn, and again, we can work through some walkthroughs. We can actually do those together. That would be a fun thing for the team to see. Yeah. We can do a lot of education, hang out as a team. I'll do it outside so I can smoke a cigar like, like TD. And nice. what we're getting at is you can actually use uh, the block explorers to actually interact with those contracts directly. You don't actually have to come touch them. Um, and I always like to reference this. It's almost like if people remember like editing their MySpace page or any of that goofy stuff back in the day when like HTML was like the cool thing and you'd go in there and play with some of that stuff. That's the difference in like the code in the front end. So we, we'll, we can write some documentation uh, so that people can actually interact with the block explorers. And even if you never really need them, it's it's a really cool thing for people to get a very like, okay, this is front end, this is contracts. And then, again, as they're moving through, they'll just have a, a good understanding. They'll feel confident with these systems. So um, we can always dig into that stuff in a, at a later date. Yeah, you, if you take a look at this, just so people get a visual, this is liquid loans borrow section. You can see it's the same dollar amount that you see here, same amount of PLS, right? Everything on ours is identical to here. This is a direct pass through. And if I took a loan, the credit uh, collateral ratio would be the exact same on our collateral ratio. It's exact same. Stability pool, you, this is exactly the same uh, as liquid loans. And you just need to think of this as a, a giant wallet staking in uh, liquid loans. So Barista as a whole is staking in liquid loans and, and, and we've got a sizable amount of money in there. We have 652K worth of USDL staked in liquid loans through Barista. Um, and the only difference is, is when there is a liquidation on, on liquid loans, we maintain, uh, maintain the value uh, of your stability pool. So when that PLS hits your wallet from that liquidation and you lose a few USDLs, we rebalance that to where those PLS get turned back into USDL. So you maintain your stability stack. And you get the arbitrage anywhere from a very low percentage, depending on the market conditions, all the way up to, you know, 9%. So, um, we get a lot of people say, oh, I'm just going to put it all in Barista. And they're like, whoa, whoa, pump the brakes. Like, you need to work out what you're trying to achieve, right? Um, it's not a binary decision. So if you've got very little pulse and a lot of stable coins and you're trying to get exposure to pulse, you're trying to get as much pulse as you can, then you should be all in the liquid loan stability pool because it's going to take your USDL and it's going to DCA every liquidation into Pulse for you at a 10% below market, 9% below market price, right? And that way they can uh, accumulate Pulse. Now, the opposite to that is if they've got a massive bag of Pulse and they're like, I don't really need any more Pulse, but I'd like to get, um, I'd like to still get the free loan token uh, for being in the stability pool, right? That's 100% pass through with there's no scraping on any of the rewards. Um, but I want to just stack my USDL and grow that up and to the right uh, and take the arbitrage opportunity every time there is a liquidation. And so if they, so if they only want to do that, then they should all be in Barista. But what, what's really cool is like maybe they want to hedge it and they want a bit of both. 
So they could go 50% liquid loan stability pool, 50% barista or whatever percentage they want, depending on the outcome they're trying to achieve. So we're trying to educate people. It's not an all or nothing. You need to be all here, all there. It really comes down to what your outcome, what you're trying to achieve. And those liquidation events, you're, you're getting pulse on a dip automatically with liquid right. loans, right? So, so for a liquidation event to happen, um, this guy needs to be at 110% or below 110%. When that happens, when the price pulse dips and this hits 110, I'm getting a little bit of his back, which is awesome because I got it on a dip, right? Um, there are people that value those stable coins or they play the game that I do. And I stack stables all on Barista uh, until I see a, a big enough dip where I take some of that stack and go market buy, right? So uh, mine's kind of a, my plan is always kind of a hybrid uh, of both of those strategies. But I'm always looking to accumulate more pulse because then I throw it back in my vault and then that vault gets uh, uh, another loan. When, when, when the price is right. And there's a couple other things that I, I think are really cool to highlight about uh, what you guys have done and why, um, like when we're actually building this stuff, I know you guys have dealt with it. We call it feature creep. Um, and on the other side, like for users, it'll be overwhelming. So for everyone that's like a big hex player, imagine if the first time someone came and told you about hex, that the very first thing they took you to showed you hex on two different chains showed you the T-share mechanism, showed you Hedron, Icosa, what's a HSI staking versus traditional staking and all the maxi variations on top. And both those were on two, like your head would explode. You'd be like, guys, it's cool. I'm going to go buy Bitcoin. Michael Saylor said to, to just take a leverage on my house. I'm cool with it. You would just move <laughs> on, right? Like you'd be like, all right, it's cool. It's too much. So some of this stuff here is just modularity, right? So if you look at our front end, clean simple vanilla it's nice and sharp there's a lot to it to make it very intuitive and clean but it's you know it is as much as we can it's very simple so that's that's done for two reasons one to make sure that's not overwhelming that people can do their best to understand it but then it's also to make space and opportunity for like these two guys here to come build something else cool on top so they're going to come in now, now TD and Ty, they've got their reason to come in and look at cool stuff and want to add features. And they're going to bring in an audience and they're going to help market, market uh, the product. And now for people who, as you said, want to have a different look and use something like B protocol who want to uh, have the bean token and they have all this extra stuff, like it's, it's the next level step, right? So now they can come play on your guys's front end learn a couple of new tools, a couple of new features and keep going. And we'll see this as it progresses with other, other things. So there's, there's a lot of reasons that you want some of that modularity, right? Um, it gives all the space and opportunities for new people to come in, build cool stuff, add commentary, you know, just talk about it a different way, add a different flavor and make this stuff awesome. And, and you guys have done a fantastic job. Well, they're, they're tools that we want to use. Right. And also, um, when you're looking at like, uh, opportunities and if there's a, a a hole that you can fill right on pulse chain because there's a lot of builders doing a lot of cool stuff right it, it wasn't just like build something for the sake of building it like we're trying to build things that we want to use ourselves and that also people um used extensively on eth you know so the idea is like you know once we you know, we're only a small team and we're trying to tick off as many boxes as we can but we want to start talking to the eth bros especially not the ones that are like um don't care about gas, right? But there's always a tier below them that are, you know, don't have the Genesis ETH and they're very conscious of, of gas, but they love liquidity and they love B protocol on Ethereum. Trying to reach those guys, make sure make them know that hey, all these tools that you know and love here, you can use over here for a fraction of the gas cost, right? Uh, and try and bring those people over from from Ethereum. Because hey. everyone on Pulse Chain already knows us. So the, right. up to them, it just comes down to whether they're, they're into these these tools or not. Yeah. Um, but trying to reach the people on Ethereum and let them know. I mean, first, some of them don't know about Pulse Chain, so there's step one. We have to we have to tick that box, and then secondly, hey, there's all these cool tools. Uh, some are custom, and some are actually um, forked, maybe tweaked, forked copies uh -huh. of of DApps that they know and love already. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's the challenge, and that's what we want to try and address uh, over the next few months is is reaching out to to the ETH bros, going into their spaces, and, and trying to educate them about the cool tools available that they already know, but on on another chain. Now, now, when it comes to the staking pool, in my opinion, that is not a binary decision because we are dead on pass through. We we uh, have the same exact percentages being passed through that Liquid Loans offers, right? So this seventy. Can you clarify what pass through means? Uh, uh, the the DAP and the way the tokens are rewarded in proportion to how much you have staked is identical between Liquid Loans and Barista. Yeah, so we don't scrape or tax any yeah, of the rewards no from Liquid scraping, Loans. There's no taxing, but on top of that. Whereas if you stake your loan tokens here, you're going to uh, have a reward of PLS and USDL. If you had a uh, uh, hundred million tokens staked here, the same hundred million on Barista would would uh, generate the same amount of PLS and USDL, but you would have another token on top of that. The bean. The bean. So yeah, it 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 it. it it actually makes no sense to um, to do the loan staking through LL because you you get everything that you would get there plus an extra token that you can do what you want with. Added utility, baby. Um, yeah. And just just on the note, I know we, we touched on it, but I we have way more people in here now. Do you want to just touch on again a little bit more about some of the stuff that the the Bean will have going on? So Bean's definitely got an internal roadmap. We're trying not to like set expectations. And uh, also we want to reward the believers, the people that are stacking and uh, either getting more yield through FUX or single-sided liquidity on nine millimeter or providing liquidity. Um, but there is the, 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 the one statement we've gone public with is it will reduce the fees by staking Bean. Uh, so the amount of bean and the, and the, the length of bean, uh, staking bean, you'll reduce your fees on our OTC marketplace, which is Bistro. Um, so if people like to save money on fees, um, then I'd be stacking the bean. Um, we have other future cases with NFT collections and utilities, but we haven't gone into details. But there's, we've got a lot of flexibility of what we can do with that, that token in the future. It's not inflationary all that ever was has already been uh, minted and uh, they're being dripped to uh, people uh, within this pool, right? The the uh, staking pool. They're also being dripped to MCR stakers. So if you have your MCR token staked, you have uh, these tokens showing up in your wallet as things, uh, uh, as they get rewarded. So we constantly drip being in here twice a day, I believe it goes in. When there's a liquidation, you'll see actual USDL show up in your wallet. So that 1% that gets scraped from uh, liquidations and rebalancing here uh, on these rewards, the 100% of that fee goes to the people who have this stake. And that, that includes us. The team gets none of that. The only way we get some of that money is by staking our own MCR tokens. Yeah, I, def I definitely dig that. And I think that this is something that I really hope to see as we, as this stuff keeps progressing, you guys touched on a few things there. Um, when it comes to like trying to bring over the ETH bros and things like that. Um, uh, one thing that I think is a, is a bit of a balancing act um, I don't find it that particularly difficult, but I know that a lot of people do, especially if they're not as comfortable with some of the other tech. Um, but like what's pulse chain to people on the outside? Like people, most people don't run validators. They don't know what, they don't know what goal, they don't know what goal pulse is. They don't know what geth is. Um, you know, they don't know what lighthouse is. They know what prism is. They don't speak the same language as, uh, you know, gamma. So like what's pulse chain to them? It's a ticker symbol and it's the stuff that they can touch. Right. Um, so, one of the things that I think is important as we move forward is, is seeing things like this here. Like this is the stuff that they can touch on pulse chain, right? Um, you know, the, the thing about even low transaction fees are like Tron has low fees. Do, do any of us here do much on Tron? Nope. Because those aren't, well, TD actually, my TD is everywhere. I, I actually fired up a Tron wallet once and I just said, no, I'm not doing it. Um, so, so, so there you go. 
But is it because you objected to the Tron code? Is it because you could, or is it just because there wasn't stuff there you really wanted to do? It, it, there was one thing I wanted to go play around with over there, and then uh, it, it was just such a hassle to get from where I was over to Tron. I decided against it. Right. I'm actually going to bring up a comment here. So, one, Nas, Habibi. Hope you're doing well, brother. Um, what up, Nas? Yeah, y'all know Nas is a legend. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's a, a valid comment. And I think that that's one of these things that like, hopefully as we keep building cool stuff, you know, um, the, like RH is going to do his thing, right? Like right, wrong, and different. You like it, you love it. He's going to do his thing. The rest of us, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take it down, uh, Nas, just because it's uh, cover, covering up Ty. Um, it's important that we have all these other things that are here that can draw some people in, right? Um, like you said, you went to Tron because there was something you want to interact with. So um, even if people don't want to come use some of these tools or they're not as savvy in DeFi yet, like I, I use this term all the time. These are jewels in the crown of Pulse Chain. They're important for this thing to keep progressing and for people to find reasons to come in and interact. And, you know, it's not one flavor, right? They might come in, they might just hear Nas on a space and, you know, be like, man, Nas is interesting. That's cool. And it can just be enough to trigger people to take the next step, whether that's bridging over funds, looking at something else and then getting triggered to be involved in one of the projects or they, you know, they see some, one of the crazy meme things or it's an entity, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be, you know, LL or our stuff, but having all those collective voices trying to do cool stuff, people should be champion people trying to do cool stuff. Like it's net beneficial. It really is, man. It is. And when I asked you about that, if that guy came from B and B, I used to see uh, guys during what they what do they call that the BNB summer, right, uh, or, or the Binance summer. Uh, I watched a guy just run around from place to place to place with a quarter million dollar LP that was stable coins, right, and that guy was yield shopping all day long, and and every time he would come where I was, he would completely wreck me, right? <laughs> uh, he would take a, a, everything on the planet Earth. Uh, but so he would come in and drop a quarter million bucks and, and, and just take all that yield. Um, there are a lot of people out there that do that that type of uh, don't have risk uh, on, on, in crypto. They are shopping. Uh, for yield for stable coins and this yield is unheard of uh, on liquidity over on ethereum it's six percent i believe right now or mm -hmm. right around there that's what it was a couple weeks ago when i looked it, it's ridiculous right um th this this is uh, no matter how you cut it um solid and over here you would maintain that value, right? So if you drop your stable coins in here, those stable coins would main, would be stabilized in essence. So if those, if there are those type of people running around and, and, and you know one, uh, this is probably a good place to be. Well, yeah, we are, we are planning to add the APR and the diff, uh, those things. So we've just been a little tied up, but th those uh, updates to our front end will happen as well. So it'll it'll look and feel similar to to ll 100 percent. something i was going to bring up there like i know you guys remember uh you guys remember, like when we had when you know back around the like sort of uh origination around like pulse chain it was it was the team right it was all it was all of us all the sort of extended the, the extended family in there yelling about whatever the topic of the day was <laughs> but when we saw pulse x there was a lot more of what TD's highlighting. There were people that were like, where's the yield farming? Where's the incentive? Like that was their jam, right? There were people that had yeah. not heard of the rest of the ecosystem and some of them didn't even care. They were just like, where's the APR? Show me a percentage. Like, I don't care about your code. I don't care about blah, blah, blah. Where's, where's the percentage? So again, right. I think that's another one of those things about, you know, what is it? Uh, give them what they want, sell them what they need, right? Well, I was one of those guys. I, I, I'm, one of the, I'm one of the few people that moved a giant pair over to KuCoin chain when it launched one night, just sitting there with a bunch of DJs collecting the, a, a thing. Actually, I think it was called coffee. It was a, a, it was a coffee farm, um, strangely enough. But yeah, we, I, I was one of those guys. Can we bring up um, David James's comment, the one about uh, managing time? Yeah. It's just yeah, awesome. So, How are you doing, Mr. James? 
Yeah, yeah. James, I appreciate your uh, very positive commentary. Uh, your boy, uh, see your boy on there with you occasionally too, man. So uh, props to you, brother. Yeah, and uh, good, good job on three years, bro. So what I wanted to just um, bring up, I'll just share, see if I can share uh, something here as well. One moment. This one, this one, this one. It should come up. See how that looks. I don't know if I can make that bigger. If it goes smaller, let me see. Probably goes smaller. Uh, maybe just leave it like that. So with the automation, especially if you're not looking to acquire Pulse and you're just looking to maintain a, uh, a stable coin position that goes up um, and takes advantage of the arbitrage, um, so this this graphic in our in our Git uh, book illustrates the top section illustrates liquid loans right that basically it takes your USDL uh, gives you pulse and then that pulse sits in your liquidation gains in a smart contract waiting for you to come back and interact with the contract to get that pulse okay uh, and do something with it whether you go and um, just stack it or whether you go and swap it back into usdl and put it in the pool and that could that's a 50 50 whether you make a profit off that because depending on when you come back if pulse price has gone up then you're winning because you got a below market price and the pulse ran up and so you you, you made a lot more uh points but if it went down um 10 10 or so percent then you're actually underwater and you would have to wait um so if you're if you're just looking to stack the stable coin and take the arbitrage opportunity. Obviously, as you can see from this illustration, it basically takes that and automates the swap uh, and the arbitrage and puts it back into the pool all on your behalf. So it's like three transactions. All the gas is covered by the protocol, right? Comes out of the out of the rebalancing. Um, and so you don't have to do anything. So when you're asleep, when you're traveling, when you're away, uh, all that automation is done, right? So you don't have to worry about it where uh, on liquid loans, uh, it's waiting for the, the user to come back. So that's where the strength and the stability comes in when people don't probably understand, well, what's the strength and stability all about? So if you had a whole lot of inactive people um, using the stability pool in liquid loans, technically that USDL is slowly being drained, slowly being drained and replaced with with PLS that's sitting in the liquidation gains, waiting for that human to come back and interact and do something with it. Um, our system is automatically rebalancing and replenishing the USDL in the stability pool, which offers the stability to the protocol. And so that's where the, the strength and stability uh, tagline comes from in the, in the system. Um, and I too do like it, David, I like to, uh, have it all automated uh, and we are going to bring out more automation with the with the guys from tetra labs so people will be able to um take the loan that they acquire from the stability pool and be able to stake that in in um, barista in the staking uh, loan area to earn bean and all the other exposure to pls and usdl uh, and, and we're going to do some other cool automation stuff with those guys as well so we we plan to like get back as much time as we can uh, and automate as many things as possible that's super cool. Yeah, so there's a few things to do with that. One is we're working on the redemptions in quite a few ways. So if you haven't caught uh, CC's uh, last a bit, the audio is a little rough. He's traveling a bit. So uh, one, I promise that he is one, not been kidnapped. That is not a hostage video. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, I'm going to send him. I've got two of these mics. I'll clearly send him one. Uh, so don't worry, guys. CC is uh, he's okay. Um, but he touched on some of the redemptions. We're still improving on that. If you look, you can see they've dramatically reduced. Um, and we've got a few more things that are going to be coming to help bring that back into line. Um, and then the other is there's actually another team that's working on some, some variations of vaults like that, that will um, not basically kind of lower that barrier to entry in a few things. And again, that comes back to what we talked about earlier with some of that modularity. You want to give space for people to build cool things on top. So um, pretty excited to see how that one will come out as well. Oh, this one's for you guys. Yeah, I think uh, before we go on, I think that I know. Uh, so if you're looking at the redemptions analytics on liquid loans, um, sometimes they, they still could look high, right? The number of redemptions, 
whether it's full or partial. But uh, you need to look at like with, with what these guys have been adjusting and tweaking to just find that happy medium um, is the the amount in the in the redemption that has that is reduced dramatically, especially when there's a pump in PLS. Right. So right. that's probably important to note that the size of the redemption, you can't stop them because that's the idea of the, the way the whole protocol, it needs redemptions. Um, right. But if they're not profitable and a lot of people, I believe there's a lot of people redeeming that don't actually understand the system and, and yeah, could be costing themselves money. There's a funny enough on that note. Um, I don't know if you guys know, there's actually a few liquidity front ends that have taken it off. They've taken it off only because typically the people who have to do it basically by manually clicking are just basically just clicking the system um, and typically get poor or, poor order execution. So the redemptions on liquidity, there are a few front ends that have it, but actually it's almost completely contract driven now. People basically have scripts to go in there and arbitrage the peg. When I when I was uh, uh, had a stack of stable coins and a, and a bunch of other stuff over on Teddy Cash on AVAX. They had a, a, a warning on that page that said you will more than likely get more tokens for whatever you're swapping to if you do it through a DEX. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was, uh, it, it's the redemptions that are happening now when that token is, when the stable coin is underpaid, those are needed to right. keep that token, uh, to keep that stable coin stable. Um, so, so, when you see the redemptions uh, uh, bar graph now uh, and everything's light blue, that's that's normal. Right. I can answer this question. I did see it come up before. So it's not really going to be a new front end, okay? What we plan to do is just have a, a toggle, right, up the top. And when you hit the toggle, uh, obviously – all the nomenclatures like you know, so usdl will become pxdc right and pls will become plsx maybe there'll be a uh some sort of color scheme difference or a slight variance just so people visually can see which one they're on as well right um and maybe some of the metrics uh will change depending on what we 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 can get out of that um but yeah it'll be the same front end and the same time that we we bring that out we plan to bring out um wallet connect v2 for the mobile users into into our barista front end because most of that our coding was already done on the front end before that uh, wallet v connect 2 come out and it's not just it's a, a copy it's paste. not easy it's actually a pretty big thing it's it, it's got to be rewritten the whole front end's got to be rewritten and make sure everything works as intended basically um and so if if we knew that was coming before we started a line of code it's a lot easier to implement at the start um, but when you've got to go back and put it in, you can't just take out the wallet interaction you have and just put the new one in and, and, and it just fires up and works. It just doesn't work that way. So um, Buffet has Wallet Connect V2 and everything else that we're building already will have Wallet Connect V2. It's just Barista that doesn't have it right now. But we plan to roll that upgrade out for the mobile users, especially people using internet money, um, to be able to use the Wallet Connect V2 uh, when we roll out the Barista for Earn. Something else I thought was pretty cool. Um, so Nick and the guys over at Hocus Pocus are a pretty cool group of guys over there. Um, Very, one, Nas is 100% correct. They do have a cool front end that helps a lot with like chasing all these yields for them. So, uh, which I hadn't actually referred to that way. So I'm going to steal uh, TD's line. If you're yield shopping, this, this is the strip mall, baby. This is where to go find it. Um, <laughs> something else that team is doing that is super cool. Um, they're actually, I believe they're going to do it for... Uh, the Power City guys, and I think for you guys as well, but they're going to add in, um, they're going to add in staking from LL. So they're going to add that in as the next line. So you're going to be able to go to Hocus Pocus and stake your loan in USDL and all that kind of good stuff there on their front end as well. I, yeah, I don't know if I ever would have slept if I ever saw that page that they have. With all of the, it's the most bonker th bonkers thing. I, I would have just told the wife, you know, I'm going to be in the garage probably for two three months uh and i'll come <laughs> back and take showers every now and then that is the craziest page i've ever seen it's pretty cool I've been, man i've been liaising with nick um and war ants shout out to him he's a very big supporter of ours even did some votes for fucks for us i appreciate you brother 
Uh, he's got Nick and I in a room together, and and, and Nick is going to roll out some barista stuff on the Hocus Pocus Wizard, right? I'm sort of super appreciative of that. And you know, it just goes to show the more teams collaborate together, the better off the whole community will be, the stronger the chain will be with the offerings. Um, so uh, we try and embrace that wherever possible. Yeah, I agree. And then this guy's such a class act, man. Hexius, man, you're a legend, brother. I appreciate all the uh, positivity um, for myself and also just the rest of the ecosystem. Um, it's rare that I see one of your posts and then, you know, want to delete the app. There's a lot of people that when they talk, I want to delete X and just walk away from everything and uh, go out and live in the woods. But you're a super positive guy. And uh, I absolutely agree. There is a And, and, and a that. cigar smoker. And a cigar smoker. I met this man in Vegas. Uh, yep. First day on the, on, the, on the golf course. Always positive. Um, yeah, he's, he's fun to be around. I've tried to get him to go on a riding trip in, in, in Utah because I think that is the area he, he is uh, generally in. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's a definitely a solid guy here. I, she was She's popped in here a couple of times. I meant to say hello to her earlier. Miss Sandy Beach, how Miss are Beach. you? How are you? One of our biggest supporters. Uh, ad admin in our room, yeah. always helping out, um, tweeting, retweeting stuff as well. Um, she li liaises a lot with Hex Token with his YouTube and just keeps him abreast of what we're doing. And then he goes and streams about it. So, um, yeah, really appreciative of what's happening. And, and Satan's Angel follows us wherever we go. Thank you, bud. And then this guy here. Mr. Top Gun. Top Good to Gun. See you. Haven't spoken to him in a while. He was running some spaces for a while. I know he's been pretty busy. So, um, yeah. We do – David James has put up a hashtag Tangang with some orange orange icons. Um, we were trying to have something out this week. We're probably going to – we are going to push it to next week because we don't want to rush it and we want to make sure everything's right. But we are – going to be doing a uh, a free mint friday um with the with the tang gang uh so probably going to push it to next friday just because we're so late in this week um and there there is some free mint stuff on offer that's going to be pretty cool so um keep a lookout for that on hexo8coin.com uh, uh or through the tang gang guys or through ourselves but you will you will see something come out over the next few days for for next friday well, that's cool. Free mint. So, what are, yeah. you, what are you guys minting? Ooh, you're just gonna have to find out. Mystery, mystery. I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. All we'll tell you is it is limited edition. It may it may be that limited that it uses the magic numbers that we have in our name, and that is all. And once they're gone, they're gone, never to be repeated, and they will have utility. Uh, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> very cool very cool never thought i would be sitting in front of a computer uh being a member of a group called the tang gang right uh it, it, it is uh pretty wild those guys are awesome they're fire breathers that's for sure yeah we can't keep up with them so no we, we just you know so we, i try to check in as, as often as i can but we've been super busy lately but you know they're they're punching through the noise um out there and getting a lot of um notice from various communities outside of pulse chain which is which is awesome it's awesome yeah i, I know that they uh they they do some stuff and they're a little closer with chia which i think is really cool uh i'm a big big fan of uh gene and uh brams over there those guys are they're not even ogs they're legit cypherpunk ogs like all yeah. the way back um so all I, the guys I, i've met from the, all the guys i've met from the chia side super super smart switched on hold themselves well in conversations. I like being around those guys. I learn. I learn. Um, so yeah, it's awesome. And if it wasn't for... Gene and, for the, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. If it wasn't for people like Bullish and, and Gooey and the Tang Gang that put them on my radar, that I would have been none the wiser, you know? Yeah, I, I was speaking with whatever uh, version of Evolution Cookies was in at the time. I believe he was Orca at that point. Um he, he put me on with him and, you know, then I was like, wait, Bram, Bram, the tour guy. And he was like, yeah, I was like blown away, you know, cause Bram's one of the, you know, one of the original guys around all the tour project stuff. 
Um, and then he put me on to, to Gene and I have, I have an awesome podcast that, uh, I recommend people go check out and, you know, I, the little comments back and forth between, uh, you know, since then just, just being close and yeah, there's, um, that's one of those things where that's the difference in smart guys and whatever those kinds of monkeys are. Cause Gene's a different kind of monkey. I'm a smart guy. Those guys are truly different. You know what I mean? Um, and it's, it's a blasting time. You get a chance to interact with people like that. Like those guys. Those guys turn zeros into ones, man. Very savvy. <laughs> yeah, I like hanging awesome. out with them. Let's see. You got what you think? What you guys think, man? We did a decent walkthrough, hit some of the cool stuff. Uh, yeah. Coming on 45 minutes. You guys got some clothing thoughts, any words of wisdom, well, expertise for the bull run? Obviously, everything we do um, generates a fee, some sort of fair fee. It all goes back to the MCR stakers on Buffet. Buffet is a multi-chain dap it's only working on pulse chain at the moment um but when steakhouse comes out uh, it will be going live uh, on ethereum and we have one coin which is mcr 369 it was all natively minted on pulse chain but you will be able to bridge that one coin over to ethereum and the wrapped version will work in our dap on ethereum so one chain uh, one coin two chains and it'll capture the fees from the from the depths that we have on ethereum and the liquidity pools that we support are all on pulse, all chain. pulse chain very cool yeah that's the best part of that yeah Brings very, people very back cool. and forth if they want to it's going to give a lot of game theory right because steakhouse and bistro will be on both chains right the otc and the hex staking pools uh obviously on pulse chain we have barista Brista for LL and for Earn in the future, right? Um, so people are going to look at what, where to best put their MCR token based on the yield. Um, but Bistro and and Steakhouse could be big yield generators, and so because they're working on both chains, depending on what how adopted the pools get for Hex uh, for Steakhouse on on the ETH side, and then the OTC, which is open to you know anyone to trade any decent token one-on-one -on -one or one to many um we could see people going oh well i'm going to leave 60 percent of my bag on buffet on pulse chain and i'm going to bridge 40 percent over to buffet on ethereum uh they're just going to be analyzing that yield and 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 moving around so it's it's going to be pretty cool the, the 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 cool thing about that because it is one token instead of like mini it twice and having it on two chains because people now are going to shift between uh buffet on two chains it means the the yield's juicier for everybody because you're now like if 60 percent of it goes to to the to the each side that means there's 60 percent less on the pulse chain side which means there's more revenue for the people on that side so the game theory and where to put it is going to be quite interesting to see very cool there there's a that's something that's also usually like a big opportunity the community has there's a lot of savvy guys but for people that like the um, you know, the, the Hedron or like the Maxi, Desi, all those sort of derivative. Um, there's been a lot of opportunity to sit there and see where those things are mispriced. Um, community does a lot of things well, but they've not like, again, as a, as a group, because it's still relatively small in some ways, they, there's always big opportunities there and those spreads can be large. So especially when you get that, that two chain mechanic going on there, there could be a lot of juicy ways to take advantage of that. Agreed. So we're, we're, we're pretty excited to, uh, get that next phase rolled out. Um, so yeah, I think we've covered everything. I think yeah. we've covered most things. We don't want to give broken. That's one of my personal favorites. Someone just made the joke that you need a, you need the roach clip. So <laughs> yeah. up. Hex, Hex yeah. G banger. He's one of our boys. We've known him as long as we've known you. Yeah. Yeah. Solid guy. Very solid. Turn me on a, a out of base. Um, that, that's a if you can find them that's a good cigar hard to find bud hard to find limited limited numbers made yep well i sent i sent you some of the finest things to come out of communism i thought they'd be here today but i guess they'll probably show up for you tomorrow i don't know if you heard it while we've been on on stream my dogs were barking so it might be a maybe it's here yeah that might be it that might be it <laughs> Well, gentlemen, as you guys know, again, your personal friends, I love y'all to death. We talk all the time, but I'm really glad we got a chance to link up, hop on stream, 
Uh, yeah, we appreciate for all the work, man. Like even beyond Bistro, just the amount of support you guys have given uh, myself personally, the team, the product, the platform, the chain as a whole, man. You guys are legends, man. I truly appreciate all the work, man. Yeah, you, we bro. appreciate the opportunity. Um, yeah, obviously in the background, not so much with liquid loans, but we, we, we did a lot of private testing for you guys for Pulse Chain Safe. So people want a multi-sig uh, with basic multi-sig um, functionality. Uh, yep. TD and I did lots of testing on that for months. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we try and help wherever we can. Um, so yeah, we appreciate the collaboration and have, having us on to talk and about it. we appreciate it. having the multi-sig. We use it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, we use it ass. every day. Yeah, awesome. multi, multi six super underrated, man. I've, I've been a big fan of Gnosis on the east side for a long time, and I'm glad we have it over here. Well, if you remember back in the day, us three and a few other rejects, we we tested the Gnosis on the. In fact, I think your money's still sitting in that wallet. Uh, <laughs> I Morris. think I've got like 250 <laughs> bucks still sitting in that thing. Yeah. Well, well, to be fair, it's probably worth more now because the the ETH has run up. Um, so oh. it'll, just, it, it'll just cost you <laughs> 10 times as much to swap it. In I'm anything. gonna say, <laughs> well, that I'm gonna have then, to, that I'm gonna have to get the gang back together because I think that there's seven of us on, on the multi sig. I'll sign, yeah, I'll right. sign, but it's good. Well, yeah, I got two. I'll probably gonna have to, I'll talk to the other five, they're probably gonna want a clip. I'm gonna have to figure it out. All right, Miss <laughs> Rose, what we gotta do? All right, mama, what we gotta do? I have to shake a lot of hands. Yeah, Sandy's asked about the launch party. I assume that's the LL launch party. That uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but if it, if it does, I know CC was talking about one in the future at some point because um, he asked me to come and live DJ at it, which of course I'd be more than happy to uh, come and do that. But um, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if and when that's planned now. We'll have to we'll have to lock down CC for that one. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to reach out to him sometime pretty quick, man. Um... I know that we're getting fetching a few of these other things wrapped up. Our launch got launched and launched and launched. So we got more things coming together. Um, but yeah, we'll we need to get that together pretty quick. But gentlemen, cool. it's a pleasure. Right. We'll wrap it up. We got any final ones? Ooh, one quick one from Nas. We'll give a quick shout out. Yep, to the to Pulse Safe. Yeah, so they use absolutely. the multi sig as well. Yep, yep, yep. Happy to see it. And uh cause, appreciate the questions earlier. Absolutely nice. Yep. We yeah, appreciate it showing up and hanging out. So Awesome. Yeah. Thank you uh, for having us on. Uh, it's been great uh, going over our stuff and, and getting to chat with you, buddy. Enjoy yep. it. My pleasure. Yeah. All right. Peace. Lewis, take us out, bud. Peace.